three, two, one. I'm Kathy Hobbs and welcome to The Real, where we help you harness the power of video. For those who, who may not know me, I own Kathy Hobbs Design Recipes, which is an interior design and home staging company based in New York City. And for 20 years, I was a newscaster, mostly in New York, and I am also a TV host. And I really enjoy helping people uh, master their on-camera skills and harness the power of video. Today, I have a very special guest, uh, Tommy Rivero. He is a celebrity makeup artist. He is also a good friend. And he happens to be the makeup artist, the personal makeup artist for Barbara Corcoran of Shark Tank. Here's a little bit of information about Tommy Rivero. Hey, Tommy, how are you? Hi, Kathy. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. I have to say, um, when I first had you do my makeup, it was transformative. I remember we met at CBS. Um, it was 5.30 in the morning. I yeah. was on a local uh, show on CBS, and there you were. And, you know, not everyone can do... Um, all different types of skin types and shades and things like that. And so I think let's start from the very beginning. How does someone even find a makeup artist that's right for them? How do you even, where do you start? Well, Kathy, uh, first I wanna, yes, I totally remember meeting you one of our first many, many early mornings uh, we've had together. Um, and to answer your question, yes, how does someone find someone that is good for them? Um, I think, well, we live now in the digital age of, you know, everyone's portfolio is out to see, right? So it really takes you very, a couple minutes for you to, browse through that person's online portfolio of sorts, whatever they've posted online, and see if their kind of style of work, because we're all makeup artists, but every makeup artist has a different style, just like every hairstylist has a different style and stylist. So you kind of want to see what this person has been posting or has up on their online portfolio, whether that be website or social media, and see, one, it, does he have a good wheelhouse to treat all different kinds of skin tones? And do I fall in between there? And two, what are his, what is his style like? What does the, uh, what do the eyes look like? What does the finished product look like? And is that where I want to go with my look? Well, where would you even starting back in the day, you would go to a, a mall and you'd go to, let's say a makeup counter and you would get either a free makeup session or you could pay for a makeup session. Where does someone even start to go to find a professional makeup artist? And for a lot of people, it's really scary to think of, you know, paying someone for what they think may be top dollar. Trust me, guys, it's worth it. But where would you even go to, to learn about a makeup artist and be able to hire someone? Well, in order to, for you to hire someone, I think the search one, if you have some word of mouth, word of mouth is the best place to start, right? Someone you use who showed up on time, who showed up with a clean kid, who's uh, someone you know used um, that can they can recommend. That will be my first initial start. Now, if you don't have a good word of mouth, I think that going online on Google and searching for whoever is local to you, and I'll tell you why local is important. 
depending on what you are filming or, or when you are filming, you want someone who's going to be available around your schedule. A lot of professional makeup artists take a lot of freelance jobs and you don't want to start with someone who has two, three jobs in between who you're going to get, uh, you know, a sliver of their time. You want to start creating a relationship with someone who you know is going to be available when you need them and who's going to take the time to get to know you so that they can one, advise you on the right products for you and two, um, get to learn where you want to go with your overall look. Let's talk, let's talk money just for one second. What are the ranges that someone can expect to pay um, to hire a makeup artist? I have to do a personal bio reel and I want to look really, really good, or I want to present uh, myself in a really elevated way. And I think this warrants a professional makeup artist to do my makeup. How much typically should someone expect to pay? Well, you know, as you know, in, in, our, in, our, in our industry and in any service industry, it really falls down to experience. However, at a local level where you can find someone in, in your area, um, you can go anywhere from what the apps are you doing now, anywhere from like $200, $250 to, you know, Kim Kardashian's makeup part is, you know, it's $10,000 a day. So, I mean, the range definitely varies depending on experience. What I will tell you is no matter what that price is, just be, just like there are some overpriced under, um, uh, under experienced makeup artists, there are some underpriced over experienced makeup artists. Bottom line is don't go on the price. Don't go on the cheapest person. Go on based on what you see the results this person can deliver. It doesn't matter whether that be expensive because a lot of people judge by price on experience. And there are a lot of people who are great professionals who just don't know how to price themselves or are underpriced for their area. So look at the finished product and judge by that versus the price point of their services. And that's, that's absolutely true. I remember when I was um, looking for a makeup artist for my wedding, I was getting married out of state. So I couldn't necessarily use the makeup artists who I normally would have used. And what I did was I went for test sessions with various makeup artists and, you know, Folks, I have large eyes to begin with. And one of the makeup artists lined my eyes with white pencil, which is an absolute no-no because what it does is it makes the eyes look bigger. And it was the most expensive makeup artist. And I thought they just did a horrible job. And I went to someone else who got my face. And so um, I think you need someone who definitely gets your face. One of the best pieces of advice, Tommy, that anyone ever gave me was to actually sit down with someone and pay for a session, pay for an extended test session to learn how to make my own face. Um, for years and years, when I was doing the news, I was making, um, you know, making my face in the back of a live truck. Well, in the front of the live truck, sometimes when I was in the passenger seat and you're just going like this, looking at the mirror or you're in the back, you know, cutting tape and all that. Um, do you recommend someone essentially scheduling a session, an hour with a makeup artist to really learn how to use a lip liner, how to use mascara, how to apply lashes, how to sculpt the face, all those types of things? Kathy, I'm so glad you brought it up. Yes, absolutely. It is the one service every single makeup artist offers and is the one service that is so undervalued. In order for someone to do your face the way you want it to do, the, the way you want it done and the most effective way for you is to give that person the chance to have a long extended dialogue with you, to go through your makeup bag, to try out new colors, to see what really works in your skin, what works in your eyes, to take it off, to try something else. And that's not necessarily day one, the day you hire them, the day they have an hour, an hour and a half to get you through the works with hair, with makeup, with whatever it's going on. A consultation is key. And it's something that we all do for any film and television work. I mean, before we start shooting any movie or any TV show, we have test days where we try out the makeup, we see what it looks like on camera because no matter what our vision is, the director, the client, the makeup artist, when you see it on camera, it's a totally different ball game. And that's why that consultation is 
key, not only for the makeup artist to produce what you want, but for you to be able to take matters into your own hands if you don't have that person in a pinch. Let's talk about product in a pinch, if we can, just for a second. Um, I remember one time I was on a morning show at 6 a.m. and I walked into the makeup room and the makeup artist had gone home sick. She had done the anchors. I was a guest. She had done the anchors. <laughs> I was a guest and there was no makeup artist. I ran to Dwayne Reed. Um, thank goodness they were open. It was actually a 24 hour Dwayne Reed. And I was actually very pleasantly surprised to find that I could get foundation, really camera ready foundation, um, lashes, every um, eyeshadow, everything right there. Um, for someone who is looking for sources where they can get makeup for, for their, their on-camera looks to do it themselves, can they go to a drugstore or would you recommend going to a Sephora or walking into a Mac or walking into a department store and going to a makeup counter? Where do they begin really? Well, I to address the drugstore um, product lines, I think that you have more than enough great product to be able to do your face out of a drugstore. Absolutely. Now, when I do recommend going into a Sephora or more of a specialty store that carries different brands, is if you have specific product with, I mean, specific issues with your skin, or you have a very difficult skin tone that um, needs a lot of correction, and you need a specific correcting foundation from a specific line. However, for a basic kit, if you must and you have, if, if you must, then you can definitely start from drugstore products. I mean, the giants like CoverGirl and Revlon and um, uh, Ame and all of those uh, other drugstore brands are investing a lot of money in formulating pretty um, competitive products to a lot of the big name giants that we know. Let's, uh, let's take a look at some of your work you know, some of your, your, your beauty here, um, everyone. So let's, uh, let's take a look at some of Tommy's work and we're going to talk tips as we go to some of the photos, because I'm really excited to see, um, you know, kind of how you, how you bring everything to life. It's, it's really kind of fascinating because when you, when you look at, um, beauty and makeup, it really is sculptural, right? So um, it's just so interesting to, to see how you apply all of your principles to all of your different looks. And I know that you have a lot of um, images that you wanted to share with us. So, um, you know, one of the things I want to talk real quickly before we go to those, um, those images is about uh, foundations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that is really the hardest thing, I think, to kind of really kind of blend and for people to kind of know, um, you know, where to, where to start and get that foundation. Well, I, I, for when we're talking about talking about foundation, you must realize that it's going to take some trial and error and that's okay. And even when you feel like you found the one, don't settle on the one. Trust me, there is something better and closer to your skin tone down the line. It's an evolving, uh, a, a, a corridor of foundations throughout your lifetime. Trust me. Um, specifically also when the seasons change and uh, depending on what's going on with, in your life, how you know active you are and uh, so on and so forth. But finding the right foundation shade is vital for you to look professional on camera. It's really what separates the kids from the men and the women. It's really what separates a professional job from someone who um, really has no idea what they're doing. So <laughs> finding the right shade and the right match is the most important step towards having uh, professional results with your makeup. And one of the most important tricks to do is not to match your face. A lot of people think that when you are going to try out a foundation color that you're matching your face. But remember that your face, depending on whether you wear a lot of sunscreen or if you don't at all, it's the highest plane of your um, body that your the sun catches. So a lot of times there's discoloration, there are two different tones, 
or there are um, uh, spots that are much darker than others because the sun is hitting those spots constantly and you really don't wear sunscreen. So one of the uh, one of the rules of thumb when we are going to go match foundation is to do a, a swatch, a pretty long swatch from the back of your ear down to about your um, throat. Uh, we would say you just take one long swipe. And the reason why you want to do that is because when you blend this out, you will be able to tell if in fact this is going to match the baseline color of your overall skin tone. And that's the most important match you will ever have to do with any of your makeup because this is where everything starts. This is where people can connect with you, your skin tone, who you are. And um, it's what brings realism into any video content that you're going to be putting out there. When your skin tone doesn't really match the rest of your body, your hands, the neck, your ears, then there's a total disconnect between the message that you're trying to send your viewers and what they're receiving. Now, I've got my makeup done for probably 20 years. I have never heard about that, but it makes total sense. I, you know, you're always so obsessed with blending the, uh, the, the, the tone, you know, especially between your chin line and your neck. So let's go to some photos, Tommy. I, you know, really anxious to, to show some of your work and talk about examples. Um, this is, uh, you know, of course, a, a famous model, Tyra Banks. I'm looking at some shimmer on her forehead. There was a time when everyone was talking shimmer brick, shimmer brick, shimmer brick. Um, talk about this look. Yes. Well, you know, warm eyes and a fabulous lash and warm tones all around the face always work. The reason why is because that sultry uh, terracotta um, brown tones always look approachable, friendly, and can be as fierce or as natural as you want it to be. Here, just like you mentioned, I used a little bit of a shimmer brick powder um, highlighter on the higher planes of the face. So on your forehead and right underneath uh, above your cheekbone. And the reason why is just like you said, um, there was a trend for a while where, you know, adding uh, metallic powders to catch the light was all the rage. And what this does is that it brings the features forward, creating a two dimensional face. Whenever you're doing something uh, for video or photos, you don't want anything that is one dimensional, meaning flat. So what you're trying to do with this whole sculpting range um, that we've gone through in the past several years, it's that at its core, it's bringing out your higher points of the face, your features, and making and receding or contouring the face with the darker t uh, darker tones on the face. And that's so a granular look, right? Correct. All right. So let's talk about that. You um you were sharing with us, you've shared with us kind of like, you know, what you're talking about, different techniques. So let's go to that. So um, this is, you know, gets into sculpting. It can be an advanced technique, right? Not everyone may be able to do it. And that relates to essentially highlighting different parts of the face. Um, and so um, essentially we have different zones, you know, on our face and, so that basically means sometimes there is a discoloration, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, well, it, this is really about simplifying this uh, buzzy uh, word uh, contouring that everybody has been using for many, many uh, years now, more so than ever before. We've talked about contouring, obviously, since, you know, Hollywood started in the silver screen, but um, the 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 common uh, uh, contouring that we see on social media and on a lot of news outlets um, is the basic theory of a triangle of light. And what this means is that you're going to focus your lighter tones inside of that up, upside down triangle. And what this is going to do is that it's going to allow the light from the setup to bring forward under your eyes, right above the lip and right above the brow. What this does is that it creates a two dimensional shape on the face and allows you to really be able to shape and add structure whichever way you want. Now, now what are you contouring with concealer? 
are you contouring with concealer, with powder, or with foundation? Now, just to demystify this, contouring can happen with absolutely anything that is light or shadow, meaning you could do it with concealer, powder, or foundation. But in order for you to do contouring and for it to last, you want to do cream under powder, meaning anything that is creamy, whether that be your foundation or your concealer, under the powder to set it and seal that makeup so that it doesn't move. Now, when you're adding or doing two different colors, for example, under the eye and right under the cheek, um, you want those placements to stay, which is why you do the cream, set it with the powder so that no matter what you do with um, highlighters or anything over that, those placements stay in place all day long. Well, I want to go to um, another one of your um, your models here. Um, and when we're talking about the, this next photo, I want to talk about setting. Um, setting the, the makeup because there's a spray that I've often used yeah. um, works. Um, I want to talk about that. Um, so let's let's go to another um, model here um, because you know we're helped with learning about different skin tones and yeah. this is of course um, something that a lot of men don't think about. They don't think necessarily about makeup. Um, I can tell that the left side is. Um, with no makeup and the right side is makeup. Would would you suggest men uh, that they wear foundation and powder or just powder only? We live in the digital age of every, everything that we do, especially for business. If you are in business and you're creating content, men, you no longer can get away without wearing foundation. And this does not mean get some colorless or colored powder and try and buff it all over your face and hope that it looks okay. It's about what we call in the industry spot conceal, which is what you saw in our uh, male model before. What this means is that you're going to use minimal makeup because yes, we want you to look as natural as possible, but you're going to use it in any kind of area where there's opportunity to blend it to your natural skin tone. Any spots, any discoloration, you're going to place a concealer or a little dab of foundation, blend that out and then seal it with a little bit of powder. Men can no longer get away with not wearing makeup because that is vital in order for you to have a unified skin tone and for you to be able to create content that looks professional. Absolutely, absolutely. And let's talk about um, freckles. Uh, sometimes, you know, there is, you know, a blemish, discoloration, moles. I have moles. And you wanted to talk about that as well, I know, because a lot of times people need that coverage. Freckles. Yes, yes. Well, listen, freckles are a choice of the client. A lot of times clients want them covered. So you do a more full coverage foundation. A lot of times the client wants natural for them to come through. Here's a great example of having full coverage foundation while buffing everything out and allowing the skin, the real skin to pull through and to show her natural freckles. It's a conversation between the client and the makeup artist, but if you do want to cover your freckles, I suggest always, or any kind of discoloration, um, I always suggest uh, to top your foundation up, not with a uh, loose powder, but with a dual, powder, a dual finish powder foundation that is going to add a little bit more coverage. And once you spray that setting spray that you mentioned earlier, it's going to bind everything together, seal everything together, and allow it to have full coverage while still looking like skin. Let's talk about that for a second because I've always been afraid of being overly shiny. And I used to have these blotting um, papers and I would go blot, 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 right before I, I went on. And I wanted to have my face as mad as possible. I didn't want to see any shine. And one time you actually did my makeup and I looked at it, it looked a little dewy. And I said, you know, 
don't we need to put more powder? You said, no, it's this looks more natural. I think sometimes styles have changed. I think there was a time when everyone just went matte, matte, matte. Um, let's let's talk about the difference between dewy looks and matte looks. Um, I will talk about some examples of that because I is it a style or is it what really is on trend? Well, it's definitely a style and it's also a preference. Um, you know, as a professional makeup artist, you cater to what your client wants. I vividly remember that conversation we had and you were totally like, you were totally trusting. You said, okay, well try it. Um, but like you said, the style has been specifically for television that less shine is better. Um, no shine is best. And what we've come to realize is that while mats can be a very specific, stern look, you know, very news uh, uh, worthy and uh, more serious stuff, um, uh, it can also be a little bit off putting. I feel like people connect with natural and realism, and we naturally have some shine, and healthy skin naturally has a little glow. So, being able to use your powders um, in, in in a strategic way, and placing um, the the mattifying agents in a very uh, strategic manner, can also uh, benefit you in the end because your audience connects with you more. Uh, uh, you look uh, friendly. Uh, you look more approachable than having a very matte, distant face. Um, when when we're when we're thinking about uh, video work, you have to always think. You know, what do I want to see? Who do I want to connect with? And 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 strive to mix what that look is with your organic look. Um, I don't think anyone wants to sit at home and watch somebody who looks a little uh, off-putting or stern or just a little bit um, too serious um, in the wrong way. Um, I feel like a little bit of a highlight, a little bit of a natural shine, not place, not a metallic powder, letting your skin breathe says that you're healthy and you take care of yourself and uh you have great skin you know uh oily skin is healthy skin and while we don't have one excessive shine um uh overly powdering your face it's uh really uh no no nowadays it just doesn't look great unless it's a a specific fashion editorial or a red carpet look, no matter how oily you are. And I think um, what we've done, Kathy, working together and uh, what I recommend for people who are also concerned with um, uh, uh, shiny uh, skin or uh, producing too much oil is start from the bottom, start from the base and or tell your makeup artist to start from the base. Find a mattifying uh, primer, find a mattifying foundation so that you use less powders and less uh, secondary products to blot out that shine. Blotting sheets are fantastic, which you mentioned, but they're not going to solve the issue. I'm sure you've gone through millions of those little sheets uh, during one 30 minute shoot. Um, you want to kind of use that strategically for a little bit of excess shine, but it's really not going to address the issue. Start from the bottom, from the base, build the makeup with mattifying agents like a primer, like a, a mattifying serum um, to help you control the shine throughout the day. So um, let's talk about essentially highlighting your best features. Uh, how do you know what are your best features? They may be um, it, something that may not resonate that well on camera. So how do you know what is your best feature and how do you go about making sure that it shines on camera? Well. I think it's about having an honest conversation with yourself in the mirror and you have to know what it, you have to figure out what is the one thing that you feel confident or two things or three things that you feel confident bringing forward, but choose one per video per shoot, right? So you're not going to highlight your eyes and your lips and your cheeks, right? But if you know, like, yourself, yes, I'm sorry. Have a focal point on your face. Exactly. Have a focal point on your face. Figure out what that is. And if you have more than one, your lips, your eyes, your cheeks, your nose, your brows, just try and focus on one. 
The reason for that is because when you are trying to deliver a message, when you're trying for someone to buy into you before they buy into your services, you want that person to connect with the person who's talking to them. And it hasn't been once or twice or three times where I hear so many of um, the publicists that I work with or uh, stylists that I work with. And uh, we have a client who decided to go all out, browse, uh, lashes, lips and everything. And no one remembers what she said because everyone was so focused on what she looked like. That is not what you want to do when you're putting yourself on video to um, sell your services, your products or your team, anything that you can do. So pick one thing that you feel confident about bringing forward, whether that be your lips and picking a brighter lip color or your eyes and elongating them with a winked eyeliner, or maybe you wanna go for a very demure overall look, but you really wanna emphasize your lashes. Um, just choose one, play with that feature, and um, see what kind of feedback you get. Feedback is great from people um, when you're trying to figure out what works best for you on camera. Ask your friends or ask your enemies, they'll tell you the truth. Oh. <laughs> you know who was most honest is your mom. Yes. My mom, I would get I would get home and she'd say, Oh, you looked ashy today. Oh. You looked ashy on TV. Have you oh that lip color? You didn't look good. Moms are honest. Moms. You are so true. I I feel so great. I go a couple weeks without seeing my mom. I show up. She's like, gain some weight. I'm like, actually, I've lost. Yeah, no, right. Moms are moms are on it. Let's talk about lips. Um, there was, you know, a big trend, and and I'm still doing it for a really natural kind of nude lip, um, less color, um, no reds, no purples. Um, we're going to talk about lining the lip too, but really, so do we do a neutral nude lip, or can we can we go with color? Is color okay? Color is totally okay. We are in a time where anything goes as long as it looks good on you. I think that, um, uh, and the outfit, right? It's uh, the overall package, right? So don't do a lip that's not going to really make sense with the overall look. But um, yes, playing around with colors totally in and totally now and totally forever. Um, what What's happening is that, you know, uh, for being on, you know, television for such a long time is that there's a rule of thumb that natural, mauvey, pinky, friendly, it's always the, the, the way to go. And while that's the safest way to go, it doesn't necessarily always have to end there. Um, I think that if you're new to putting yourself on camera, you are going to feel more comfortable uh, pulling something to your most natural because a natural lip is never natural for everyone. Um, so whatever you consider natural for you, starting there is a great place to go. Um, but using color in your lips to um, go with the seasons and the trends uh, are totally, absolutely uh, a yes from us, the makeup artists, because you want your content to look different. You want your content to look fresh. And um, I never suggest someone going totally off their brand and totally off who they are. So while you are still in a place where you feel comfortable, um, absolutely play around with color. It's... Uh, a, a must, I think, uh, because, you know, we're creating so much content uh, nowadays, whether that be you playing golf or you're trying to sell a house or you're trying to sell your services. Um, content is what, what how we live. So um, changing it up once in a while is definitely a plus. Now, we're looking at a lip that isn't isn't lined. Let's go back to that photo. Um, that lip it has no liner. If we can go to um, another photo that we have here of a lip, this is another without liner. What is the difference that's created once you start to line the lip? Um, I've, off, I've always been taught that you have to line a lip. That's, yes. that's what I was always told. Yes. Um, lip liner is imperative, especially 
for digital work, especially for video work. It's funny, um, it's one of the reasons why this whole craze caught on with um, the whole um, lip liners and lip trend on social media from uh, the very famous girls, <laughs> the Kardashian is because um, when they started putting themselves on video a lot, people started realizing that these lips were just so sharp and so full and so etched. And while there has been allegedly some claim of filler, et cetera, et cetera, um, it has been a trick of, uh, of us, the makeup artists in Hollywood for many, many years. Uh, lip liner is absolutely imperative for any kind of video work. Why? Because when you have a, when you have a light source, and you have a video lens, whatever the light source touches, which is essentially your full face, is going to blur out the perimeters and the lines of anything that is sharp. That is what lighting does because you're lighting your face. So in order for you to have a lip, unless you have, and even when you have a full lip, for it to look sharp and definitive and have character, you must use a lip liner. It also enhances the color of the lip and the shape of uh, the overall lip. And lips um, are youthful and it can say, um, I'm here, I'm present, uh, look at what I'm saying. So that it's so important. Well, what also I think is important is to talk about the eye. And so uh, one of the, 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 the most time that I've spent learning about my face is how to um, accent my eye. And so um, I was always taught, and I'll, I'll share with everyone at home, to essentially do a lighter color, almost like an almond for my skin, from the top right underneath the brow all the way down and left to right, just that full color, and then go in with a deeper chocolate and start highlighting my eye right in the crease, and then take, let's say, a black and go into the corner in order to kind of create um, a smoky look. Talk about what you've done here and, and what that technique is that someone can really learn at home. So these are your absolute basics. Um, every eye is different. Every face shape, every eye shape is different. And your results of, my, of what you might want are different. Maybe you want smaller eyes, bigger eyes. But as an overall rule, this graphic really breaks down um, what we as makeup artists start as a base to start shaping your eye and to start gifts, giving some life to the eye. So right under the brow, brow bone, you have your lightest, brightest, um, highlight color. And that might mean it's a bone color or a shell color. Um, it depends on your skin tone. But then from there, you go down to a mid above crease tone. And what that's going to do is going to give you a transitory shade to go into the highlight from the crease. The crease is right at the eye socket and it's what cuts the eye frame to create a longer or bigger eyelid. And it allows you to place colors or your neutrals. When you go into the inner lid and, it, and the inner uh, cor tear duct, sorry, um, you are always going to try and keep that light and bright. Why? Because when you are on camera, you want your eyes to look open and refreshed. And when the light catches the inner corner of your eye, anytime you have darkness there, unless it's absolutely a look you're going for, you're going to dim the eyes. You're going to make them a little bit less noticeable. And a lot of times we do that on purpose because we do a heavy lash for a smoky eye and it works. But for the most part, you want to stay in the, in the beiges, gold, uh, 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 metallic tones right here in their uh, inner tear duct. I pulled this, um, great palettes, uh, by Vizzy Art and, um, they have fantastic shades for film and television. This is kind of like one of our, um, for makeup artists and film and TV, uh, one of our staples. What's the brand again? What's the brand again? Vizzy Art. Vizzy Art. Yes. Okay. And um, talk about that palette. If you can hold it up again. Um, yeah. A lot of people look at this and say, well, where do I begin on the palette? And, and why are the colors in the position that they are in? Can I switch um, around in the palette or do I have to stay on the same row? Can you just even educate us on how to use a palette? 
So this is more of a professional palette. So you have a lot of different shades. Usually you buy a three, a five, or a single, and you work out of that. But I'm going to walk you through what, how you can use any palette that you have. So, you know, your top four colors in the first row are usually your highlighters. Your highlighters and your inner inner corners to your duck colors. This is what's going to open up your eyes. This entire first row. It's, it's what's going to bring the light to the features wherever you place them. So, if you're placing one of these beige tones or one of these uh, 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 brown tones right in the center and on your brow bone, you're going to see, you can almost see my natural shadows, how it kind of comes out to you. And that's those are the tones that you want to use for camera on your eyelid to bring your eyes forward, especially if you have recessed eyes. Row number two, all of these four tones are fantastic transitory colors for your crease. These are the tones that you're going to blend, 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 blend to create create a smokier uh, definition on the eye without darkening the eye area and creating a smoky eye look. So you want to keep all, all any of these four colors or tones in your um, crease color and blend out. Now, the bottom row is where you have your eyeliner, of course, the black, and then your grays and taupes. These are fantastic to um, shape. So you wanna put them as close to your lash line, la lash line as possible, creating a V shape upwards towards the inner corner, uh, towards the inner um, crease of your eye and blending that inside of your secondary colors. So no matter whether your eye palette has three shades or nine shades, 12 shades, you're always going to stay with your lights in the inner corners and under the brow bone, your mid tone right at the crease and your darkest tone in a V shape for the most part on the outer corners of the eye to elongate the eye and make your eye have more presence on camera. Can we talk about liners really quickly? So I was often taught to um, essentially line the eye um, from essentially side to side and then go into a little bit of the, the, the upper lid and then to also take a liquid liner and then line right at the uh, essentially the lash line. Um, would you recommend, um, do you still recommend using a liquid liner, a very thin liquid liner right there on the top um, especially for someone like myself who has large eyes to essentially close the eye just a little bit, just use that liquid liner on the top by that lash line? Absolutely. It's a great trick on camera uh, because it brings up the eye and makes him a little bit more almond as opposed to wide, right? And um, I think that the beauty to that also is that the liquid liner uh, usually dries like a lacquer. So it has a little bit of shine, is not matte. So the uh, the light catches that um, more shiny surface, and it brings light to your eye without making them bigger. So yes, that is a great trick, and I always suggest using a liquid liner over either a wax pencil or a powder. Meaning you will use your um, uh, eyeshadow or liner, and then for the last part go over with your um, liquid eyeliner. Well, let's talk about products. Uh, you know, you, you are essentially so great with choosing um, just really fabulous products. Um, you've shared um, some of your tricks of the trade with us today. So let's go to some products. Let's talk about them. And I know that you also have some things that you want to show. This is, of course, a um, kind of a beauty blend that you use for foundation. Talk a little bit about, about it, um, folks at home. This is something that I use personally, and I want time in it to kind of tell you how you can use it. Well, the beauty blender it is a staple in every professional makeup artist's uh, bag and i think now in every woman's bag uh, that does her, her own makeup i wish that i was promoting for them but i am not it is really truly a phenomenal product it is essentially an egg shake sponge that has the exact point for you to be able to blend into the inner corners of the eyes down the nose, 
on the chin above the lip and it has the more bulbous part where you can blend in contours or you can just use it as a sponge and a diagonal all over the face. The beauty about this uh, beauty sponge uh, above all others is that it really creates a, a phenomenal airbrush finish and it gives you the um, power to be able to control the finish that you want. Now there's a quick trick to using this beauty blender. I know you've probably heard of the beauty blender because it's very popular and I've, you've probably heard that you want to use it a little bit um, moist, wet. Now I'm going to show you the difference between what you probably think you should be doing, which is getting it a little wet and what you really should be doing, which is dunking it into some water, letting it soak in all the water and squeezing all the water out. You want this sponge to be pretty saturated with water before you start blending your makeup. What this is going to do is that it's going to pick up the excess of product that you have. It's going to blend out beautifully, giving you the control that you need to be able to keep as much coverage as you want. And why I love it most is because it really takes up anything under the eyes that might crease. It is your foolproof creaseless makeup brush without being a makeup brush. It is phenomenal. I recommend everyone to get it. I tell all of my clients, I actually wish I got a kickback on this, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is uh, a phenomenal product and it's going to give you professional results without you having to um, be a professional. I want to talk about that really quick, the dunking before we go to the next product. What about using it dry? Because I have used it dry. In fact, a lot of times I use it dry. Is that a no, no? And what's the difference between the finish that you're getting by dunking it and using it dry? You can absolutely use it dry. A lot of people actually prefer it. Um, it's a little bit drier and you have a little bit more um, control exactly where you place the product. It doesn't kind of blend out all over the place. Um, I I like it dry specifically myself for more, more oilier skin tones. And also um, if I'm using a really um, emollient or something that has a lot of viscosity, a foundation that has a lot of coverage pretty much. I like it dry because this sponge, because it's dry, absorbs a little bit of the product and kind of gives you exactly what you need. For me, I get more control out of uh, out of a dry sponge. Okay, yeah. let's go to the next product here. Um, mascara, what do you like about this one? Well, this is uh, Glossier, everyone knows, is creating some phenomenal products, vegan friendly and uh, just hyperallergenic. Great for people who are um, sensitive uh, to, uh, for their eyes specifically. But um, mascara. Mascara is absolutely imperative for men and women. And I know that a lot of men don't um, know this trick, but in te on television and uh, in film, any actor that has uh, very light lashes or very light natural hair, brows or um, lashes, mustache, gets a little bit of mascara, making sure that you go all the way down to the base. Um, the reason is um, because when you have very light hairs on your eyelashes, and when, when you have very light, um, uh, have very light eyelashes, um, it tends not to frame your eye and it tends to look a little weird on camera, almost as if you had frosted eyelashes. Um, so taking something that is a, a black brown or a true um, soft black, um, right to the base of the lash and doing the lightest coat, pushing it through, um, does wonders for men on camera and obviously for women to give them uh, some oomph to the eye look and also to shape you know, the eye, la the line of the eye for it to shape and for the human eye to have something to focus on. Now we have, we have brought on the secret weapon here. The, the Shumamera, let's talk about that. I, you know, for so many of us, it's hard to master. I think I finally have it down after 20 years. It is another one. I, it, it's another one that is a must, is a must in everyone's uh, makeup bag, professional or not. This is our trick to incredible lashes, whether you have them or not. 
this the bend the way that it just takes a natural lash bends the natural lash into a beautiful curl um it's foolproof you can't really mess it uh mess it up with this one um it does take two three four times to get down the right angle how to put it in pull it in press down um my biggest trick with this is that you want to pump 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 as you pull out and by pulling out i mean the the lash curl or not your lashes so this is not clamp you're just gonna pump 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 as you walk the uh, lash curler out. Tom, is this before or after mascara? I like to do it before. I know a lot of makeup artists who do it after. Um, it really depends on you. I don't like it after. I feel like it can pull some of the um, lashes, but a lot of makeup artists do it. Um, it, it really is preference. I prefer before because what it does is that it creates that nice curl and then you reinforce it and seal it with the wax of the um, mascara. Okay. Now let's go to some Bobbi Brown products. Um, gosh, I mean, I remember the early days of Bobbi Brown and th that brand has really come so far. It's just amazing. I mean, you can really get some, some great products there. And um, let's talk, is this concealer or foundation? These are phenomenal cream foundations. They are um, one of my favorites because um, they have incredible coverage. I'm not sure that you can see this here. Um, they have yeah. in incredible coverage. Oh, can you see it here? Um, yeah. Incredible coverage that can be easily blended and um, the uh, color range, it's very inclusive. It has the right undertones. It has the right uh, uh, overall tones. It has the right consistency. I love the foundation sticks for film and television. Um, it's what I'm wearing right now because it's a satin finish. It's not matte and it's not shiny. So it gives your skin, if you see my skin, a natural glow without it looking like too much makeup. Again, the colors are phenomenal and in a pinch, they work wonderfully as um, concealers. I don't suggest to use them as concealers all the time because they can crease because it's a heavier product. It's not formulated for under the eyes, but in a pinch, if it's a quick video, if it's a quick um, uh, takeaway, absolutely, um, they work wonderfully. Also, um, it can cover any kind of discolorations. You can really give yourself the most sheer coverage or the most full coverage finish um, depend as you please. So now we were teasing people a little bit with the NARS product. Let's talk about that. Um, Love gloss. Um, are these glosses or are these? These are concealers. Okay, they're not, they almost have a gloss that almost looks similar to that. So we're talking about concealers. Um, is this more liquid than what we just saw? Yes, and don't get confused with their, confused with their glosses. They look exactly the they same. Look exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Um, these are their uh, Radiant Creamy Concealers. This is my best kept secret as a makeup artist, personally. I can do an entire face with these. I love these for men and women. Um, they're so compact. They last forever. The colors are phenomenal. The coverage is incredible. Um, and you can really build up the coverage that you want. They are so good under the eyes. They are so thin as far as the formula and um, they don't crease. They stay fresh all day. Sometimes a lot of concealer turns to oxidize and turn colors and look grayer or um, uh, red, redder or more orangey. These uh, NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer is um, one of my go-tos for every single thing that I do because um, the coverage is fantastic and um, they come in so many different colors. I think that they have like, I think it's like 55 shades or something like that. You're definitely going to find your color and you're definitely going to love it. They also sell minis, which is a fantastic way to try them and not feel like you have to commit. So what you've shown us so far, all these great products, do you have to go to 
a department store? Do you have to go to a beauty counter? Where do you get these products? Um, because I think that these are pretty accessible. Yes, these are all accessible. These are your go-to brands for many, many people, many makeup artists. So your Sephora, your Ulta, and your department stores are definitely going to be the places where you're going to find a lot of the brands that I mentioned today. Um, uh, again, don't be afraid to start at the drugstore. There are some great finds there. Um, but if you want a more professional uh, finish with uh, a product that lasts all day that you are not going to use as much of the product. Um, uh, your department store, your Sephora is the way to go. Um, also because you're going to have a more unbiased opinion in a place like Sephora or Ulta than if you went to a specific counter. Um, uh, I'm not sure most people know, but when you go to a department store, a lot of those counters hire their own personnel. So you will, if you land at Lancome, they're going to tell you that Lancome has absolutely everything in the best. They work for uh, that is true. And they have great stuff. It might not be the best for you. So, um, going somewhere, asking someone who has a more unbiased opinion is the way to go. If you're building your own makeup bag. Um, we are getting down to the final stretch here. Believe it or not, I could talk to you for so long, but I want to talk to you about Shark Tank oh, and your celebrity client, Barbara Corcoran. Let's take a look at kind of, you know, how you style her. Wow, she looks amazing here. Talk about, you know, styling and doing the makeup for Barbara Corcoran. How did that come about, first of all, Tommy? So... I do a lot of um, projects with Sony, uh, who's out of uh, LA, Sony Studios. And I got a call uh, once, I think it was season uh, seven. And they said, we're doing some promos with, um, you know, real estate mogul Barbara Corcoran. And she needs a hairstylist, which was shocking to me because uh, the producer knows me as a makeup artist. It, although at the time I was doing a lot of uh, hair and makeup at the same time. Um, and I said, sure, no problem. She has short hair. I can definitely do it. Um, and um I went in and it was a big promo for the season premiere and she had her standing team. And as she recalls, recalls it to me, she said that she kept looking at me, staring at uh, everything that was going on with her all day long. At the end of the day, we had multiple location shoots, uh, uh, multiple studios. And um, at the end of the day, uh, she pulled me to the side and she said, well, um, would you do anything different? And I said, yes, I would. And she said, what? And I said, I would probably not use as much powder. And I use a couple, I use a couple different examples. And at the time she didn't even know that I did makeup. And uh, she said, Oh, do you, you do makeup? And I said, yes, I do actually. And I never heard back from her for months. And I thought, well, that's a way to get yourself out of a job. Right. Um, and, uh, about six months later, I got a call from her executive assistant at the time. And, um, they booked me for, uh, another promotion or a TV spot. And they said, we want to try you out for hair and makeup. And, uh, that was, uh, five years ago and I have not stopped doing her makeup since. And that's why you're not available for me because <laughs> I mean, you started doing Barbara Corcoran's makeup yes. and not being available for me, but we always stay connected. I'm so proud of you. And, you know, it's so amazing. So do you fly out and, you know, are you on the set? How often do they tape? You know, just describe that. I mean, we're, you know, I'm a fan of Shark Tank. What, you know, what is that like? <laughs> So it's, it's it's actually incredible. Um, you know, it's a reality TV show. Um, it, 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 even though it's not shot just like a regular reality show that you see, it is reality on a stage. They shoot two times a year in two different pods, uh, one in June, one in September. This year we shot all of them back to back because of everything going on. They actually, I don't think even knew how they were gonna make this happen. They sealed off uh, an entire tower in Vegas, actually. We couldn't film in LA because of the laws um, and created this giant bubble the size of five football fields in order for us to be able to film the show this year. And we go out there and we film um, the two pods in about, 
uh, 30 days total, actually. It's you very, a pod, are you referring to a season or? Yes, to the, to the season, exactly. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> yes? No, go ahead, go ahead. We shoot it in, uh, we shoot it in about 30 days, uh, very long days. There's about 10 pitches a day and every pitch takes about anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half, uh, sometimes up to two hours, but you guys at home see uh, edited version of everything that goes on. It's actually very intense and it's interesting. I come from scripted television and film. So for me, it's very refreshing to not know what to expect every single day uh, on every single pitch. You know, the set changes, the people change, the attitudes change, you know, whatever she wasn't interested or they weren't interested in before. Now they're interested now. So um, it's a very uh, uh, un unpredictable set. And I love that. Tommy Rivero, celebrity makeup artist and the personal makeup artist for Barbara Corcoran of Shark Tank. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you everyone for watching. I'm Kathy Hobbs, interior designer and owner of Kathy Hobbs Design Recipes, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.